Good afternoon, Dr. Reddy. Hi, Shiva. All right, let's start with our first question from Anne. She wants to know what is the difference between airborne and droplet spread? Yeah, and I think they're actually very similar in this case, Anne. We were just watching that Verify segment about talking. Yeah. So as we're talking or if someone coughs or sneezes, droplets will literally fly through the air and potentially could land on another person. So the droplets become airborne, and that's how the virus is transmitted, which is why masks make perfect sense by, you know, having a, a barrier between people, those droplets should not get into the air and fly across, you know, six feet to infect somebody else. This next question comes from Gail. Will spraying Lysol in a room kill COVID-19? And this is a really good point. You know, any antibacterial, Lysol is one of them, disinfectant, will kill the virus in surfaces. If it happens to be in the air, it will kill that too. Okay. But you know, this talk of the virus just being in the air, it doesn't last very long. And again, it's gotta be the droplet. So um, you can spray hard surfaces with Lysol, it's gonna kill it. So it's actually a very easy virus to kill. Soap and water will mm -hmm. kill the coronavirus. I think that's where people are so confused, Dr. Reddy. We've seen so many reports on how long the droplets can remain in the air. So when you say not so long, how, how much time are we talking about? So, you know, it, it is tricky and the CDC has kind of gone back and forth about surfaces and different things like that. But just because the virus may be on a surface or possibly in the air, it doesn't always mean that's gonna give you an infection. We really know it's person to person, and I have stressed that over the last several weeks, and I'll continue to do that. It's gotta be person to person transmission. It's highly unlikely you're gonna catch it from a surface. Um, obviously, is it possible? Yes, and mm -hmm. anything is technically possible, but really the way this virus has been spread is by person to person. And you can think of it this way. If it was as contagious, and we think measles is like this, where it can just be in the room, we would have had a lot more cases. We have a lot, don't get me wrong, but it'd have yeah. been, we'd been in a lot worse situation had this been as contagious as something like measles. It's person to person, it's a droplet infection. Okay, up next is Julie. She wants to know, can exercise kill coronavirus if your heart rate and body temperature rises? We don't have any on data on that, and I don't think so. We do think at higher temperatures in the body, it may make it harder to the virus to replicate. Mm. But when you're exercising, your core temperature goes up a little bit, but you're sweating and perspiring to cool your body down so your core temperature doesn't get high enough to really be an issue. But we, we know at higher temperatures, the virus is not as active as at lower, but your core body temperature shouldn't get high enough to where it's an issue. Would you say that exercise would at least help keep yourself healthy? So that for you would sure, be, okay. a healthy diet, exercise, sleep can only help your immune system, which absolutely will help you fight coronavirus. Okay, let's move on to Clara. She says, I am 65 years old and undergoing chemotherapy. When should be a safe time to begin working? You know, I think for someone that's undergoing chemo, if you're actively undergoing chemo, and it's, it usually or potentially could affect your white blood cell count, which can make you more vulnerable to all infection, I think I would have to say, discuss that with your oncologist. Yeah. But I definitely think you fall in that category of the people that have an underlying condition that puts you at higher risk. So I think you have to take every precaution, you know, and definitely I would not rush to do anything, but your oncologist will be able to give you better advice based on how much longer the chemo and your white counts. Yeah, and those folks still need to shelter in place until Absolutely. mid-June mid at this point, it could change. Up next is Sherry. She says, I'm 57 and have diabetes. I was going to PT three times a week. Is it safe to resume or should I wait? So here's another person, you know, Sherry with diabetes, that is a, you know, pre-existing medical condition that does put you at slightly higher risk. So I think, you know, having said that, we know the clinics are all taking all the precautions. Wearing a mask is going to help you. Yeah. I think it kind of depends. I think if you're, if you feel like you really need your PT to function, I think it's probably safe. I, I would say the longer you can wait, the better. Yeah. Um, and if you, you know, if you're doing okay and you don't think you really need your PT or it's not gonna make that much of a difference, then I would definitely hold off. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want you to lose all the progress you made. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to sort of say, take it case by case. Mm -hmm. But the longer people with pre-existing conditions can shelter in place, the yeah. better for them. And maybe you can do some things at home. Yeah. Definitely. With the PT. 
All right, uh, Dr. Reddy, thank you so much. We're going to see you in just a few minutes answering all of your pressing coronavirus questions. So please stay put. We'll check back with you in just a few minutes.